Hey, what's up, fellas? This video is for Tony and Carolina. This is an automatic shutdown system that I've built for them for their pyrolysis burners. Very windy today, guys. I'm having a heck of a time testing. It's just so windy, I don't know what I'm going to do. This does proof test that they're wind resistant, I guess. Yeah, I'm going to simulate a blowout. It goes. It suggests that the fuel was cut or the air. Okay, that simulated a blowout. You can hear we still have gas flowing. There it goes. The system has shut itself off. Now to turn it back on, like I said, you have to flip this switch again. And once your process value is stabilized and you set your temperature five degrees below on the set value, you then have to turn this switch off. So let's go over that one more time. We're gonna turn the system on. So we run the system till the red numbers stabilize and stop moving, and then we set the green numbers to a temperature that's about five to 10 degrees below that. So that way when a temperature drop occurs, it will indicate a flame out and the system will shut off. Okay, fellas, so here's a quick look inside of this box. We've got two servo valves. Now these are servo valves, actual ball valves with motors inside of them. I'll go ahead and uh, fire one up so we can hear them and actually see the speed at which the valves actuate. Okay. I'm going to heat this thermal couple up a little bit here. Just give it a little heat. And that has brought our process value way up. I'm going to hit this trigger switch. And that has caused the valves to open. Now, they don't open on their own when they hit the trigger point, and I think it has something to do with the batteries inside of these specific types of valves or putting a current, a constant current is being held on this solid state relay, and they don't like that. They won't trigger. Both these valves are connected in parallel, so they both turn off and on. And we also have a squib that's um, tied up out of the way for now, connected to this motor, the motor transformer. This is the leads for the motor to the fuel pump. And of course we've got our thermal couple that we'll want to try and find a spot to mount um, directly on the burner. I... Here we're coming up on our, there it goes. And the valves are closed. You can see the red indicator light is off. Now, as I said, you can't just walk up and hold the torch on the system. I'm heating it up here to show you. Okay, see that light just turned on? Now, that should have triggered those valves. But in this case, it did not. I still haven't got to the bottom of that. We don't need to worry about that in this process, but later down the line... That takes away that stray voltage for long enough for these valves to kick on. I think there are capacitor type batteries inside of these pumps that use the 125 volts AC current to charge a capacitor during um, power on session. Then when the power is cut, the capacitor is discharged by running the electric motor for the servo valve. They're very small, low power electric motors, similar to those that you would find inside of a cassette tape player. Okay, so to set the temperature on this thing, you're going to hit the set value, the set button, and it will now allow us to adjust this lower temperature, which is called the set value. This upper is the process value, which is the temperature being sensed by the thermocouple probe. That's the red on top. So if we want to change it, we can just go up or down. You can hear the valves actuating as I've set things. Because now we are below the operating temp. Now if I 
go below and set that. That should have triggered the valves to, to open back up. I haven't quite got to the bottom of that just yet. During testing, they did. But as I said, that's not really an issue for us. We have this jumper switch, which knocks that stray voltage off the solid state relay. Because if you have a constant voltage impinged on that solid state relay, it won't fire. I don't know what it is about that. I'm going to have to look into that. So there you go for the most part. That's basically how you set this thing. Um, it's going to come already set up. Everything should be stored in it. If you have any problems, if it for some reason erases, I'll go through and show you how to set one of these things up. But uh, that's pretty much it for the most part. When the rest of the electronics get here, I'm going to have another video for you and we'll test both fuels. We also have the option of hooking up this other solid state relay to turn the air compressor you're going to be using on and off. I believe this is a 40 amp unit. I'll have to check, but I think it's rated for 40 amps. We'll see. We would need a cooling fan at that capacity, I think. But um, basically, when the power is shut down, it would shut the compressor off too. For the most part, we don't really want the air compressor to shut off. We want it to air the area out. We don't want an explosion hazard just lingering. Okay, fellas, so I, I couldn't leave good enough alone. So I just had to get to the bottom of it. Why during testing did these valves work both directions? But once I hook it up to the system, nothing. Well, during testing, I had the transformer hooked up for the fuel pump. And that does something to the stray voltage that is impinged on this solid state relay by the capacitors inside of these servo valves. So watch this. Okay, you ready? Make sure I get you in the shot here. So now what this means, Tony, is you can just walk up to the burner with the torch and hit the thermocouple, get it hot, and that'll turn it on. We still want that trigger switch on there for certain scenarios. But uh, for the most part, yeah. I couldn't leave it alone, man. It was just irking me to death. I had to figure it out. Why can't I get these valves to go both ways? Before, these valves wouldn't um, turn on by themselves when we heated the thermocouple. It just sit there dead. Just in case you're not following what I'm talking about. I could get this thing up to a thousand degrees and nothing would happen. None of this stuff would turn back on. You would have to toggle the jumper switch. Now when you have this switch turned all the way to the right, that's turned on. I am going to label that. But when that's turned on, um, that allows you to fire up the system with the valves opened. So that there's no trouble during the ignition process. And then once everything gets heated up, once this top number stops moving you would then set this bottom number about five degrees below that so that when the flame goes out or if something happens you don't have a very large temperature spectrum to travel through before shutdown you could even go as close as two or three degrees but i don't recommend that and there are a bunch of other settings you can do with these pid controllers but that's not what this video is about I don't want to uh, strain you guys. This is my test transformer. The one you're getting looks like this, but it it's going to be brand new. Okay, we're coming up on our temperature here. Here, maybe if I set the thermocouple right on the fan here. Some of that cool air on it. Okay, it's just stalling out on me here. Come on, man. There it goes. So this transformer will shut down the fuel pump. That's how we're shutting the fuel pump off. Because just because we have a valve on this fuel pump, we can't just shut the valve and let the pump sit there and burn up. Not that it would, because this particular type of pump allows the fuel to travel directly through it. So that's kind of cool. But um, for the most part, 
I just wanted to point this out for you guys who are really into electronics and process control. There is something about these solid state relays. Now, I did a build in the past where the same phenomenon happened. I couldn't get the solid state relay to trigger. So now I know just hook a, a voltage draw onto it somewhere and it'll work because watch. Too cool, man. I don't feel like a complete idiot now. I was not going to sleep tonight until I figured out why this thing wouldn't go both ways. I've got it real bad, man.